In today's video, we'll go over a brief history of the bicentennial quarter, how to grade your quarter, and most importantly, we'll talk about what makes a bicentennial quarter valuable. The U.S. Mint decided to have a public contest to come up with a new quarter design to celebrate the bicentennial of the American Revolution. On October 23, 1973, a press release was made announcing a $5,000 prize for each of three winners of a national competition for a new design for the back of the 1976 quarter. On March 6, 1974, a native of Cincinnati, Jack L. R., was chosen as the winner. His design depicted a colonial drummer along with a flaming torch surrounded by 13 stars. The chief engraver, Frank Gasparro, made a few changes to the original design before it was finalized, but those changes were relatively minor. 1976 bicentennial quarters were minted at three different mints, Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. You can tell where a 1976 quarter was minted by looking for the letter to the right of Washington's ponytail. An S is for the San Francisco mint, a D is for the Denver mint, and a no mint mark 1976 quarter means it was minted at the Philadelphia Mint. No 1975 quarters were ever minted. Instead, the Mint began producing the bicentennial quarters in 1975, and instead of the mintage year we normally see on coins, the years 1776 and 1976 were placed at the lower part of the quarter under the bust of George Washington. Here's the mintage for the bicentennial quarter. Philadelphia and Denver minted about 1.67 billion quarters in 1975 and 1976. These were business strike nickel and copper clad. These are the quarters we normally see in circulation. The San Francisco Mint produced three special edition coins during the same time. These coins were minted and marketed to coin collectors. Here's the breakdown. Between 1975 and 1976, the San Francisco Mint produced over 7 million proof quarters, an estimated 11 million uncirculated silver sets, and about 4 million proof silver clad quarters. Out of all the silver quarters minted, about 4.9 million silver uncirculated sets were sold with silver quarters, and about 3.9 million silver proof sets containing silver quarters were sold. There were about 15 million silver bicentennial quarters made during these two years, but several million of them no longer exist. So what happened to these silver quarters? They were melted by the government. In the 1980s, the price of silver spiked significantly, and the raw silver was needed for other projects. This period of time is known to collectors and numismatists as the Great Silver Melt. So we know that there were over a billion of these bicentennial quarters minted, and that's a good thing too, because so many of them were hoarded by collectors and average citizens because of their popularity. This practice has led to many mint state bicentennial quarters that can still be found occasionally in circulation. So how much is your bicentennial quarter worth? In order to determine the value of a quarter, several things must be considered, like the mintage, surviving population, demand, melt value, and the grade. Coins are graded on a scale of 1 to 70. The number grade is determined by factors like the condition of the surface of the quarter, how well the quarter is struck, its luster, and the quarter's eye appeal. The surviving population is what's still around after coins are retired, lost, or damaged. There's no way to know how many of any coin is still in existence, but estimates can be made based on several factors. You'd probably be surprised at how many errors and varieties exist on our coins, especially the state quarters. A lot of errors and varieties can be fun to find and collect, but they don't make the coin worth much more than face value. Here are a couple to look out for. The first one is rare, but errors like this can be found in circulation. This is called a struck-through error. This quarter was struck through a cloth that somehow ended up on the planchet before it was struck. There are also coins that get pieces of metal embedded into them during the minting process. This mint error was graded MS66 and sold for $881. The next error is actually called a variety because it's a change to the original design that was embedded into the die from the hub during the die making process. As a result, thousands of quarters were probably affected by this altered die and unknowingly put into circulation. This variety is called a double die. A double die happens when the die isn't aligned with the hub for the second strike during the die making process. This results in slight doubling of some of the relief, but there have been occasions where the doubling was enough to see with the naked eye. 
If the doubling is on the front of the coin, it's called a DDO for double die obverse. And if it's on the back of the coin, it would be a DDR for double die reverse. If you're looking for double dies, a magnifier, loop, or a coin microscope will make the task much easier. Take a look at some of my recommendations in the video details. Here's what you're looking for, courtesy of the Variety Vista website. This DDO can be found on the 1976 Denver Minted Quarter. It's called the FS101 DDO. The most obvious place to see the doubling is on each of the letters of the word Liberty. So what's a 1976 Denver Minted DDO worth these days? This variety will add a premium to any of your quarters, but the key to this one, again, is the condition of your quarter. This quarter graded AU58, which is about uncirculated, and sold at auction for $690. I wouldn't normally think of trying to sell a double die on eBay, but this person did. Here's a MS67 DDO FS102 that sold for $450. And here's another DDO. This one graded two grades lower than the one sold on eBay. Sometimes where you try to sell something is as important or more important than how rare your item is. This one sold for $3,246 at Heritage Auctions Online. And here's another double die. This one is the same as the other ones we looked at, but this one is in much better condition. This quarter graded Mint State 66 on a scale from 1 to 70. You can see some doubling on the motto, In God We Trust, in these areas right here marked by arrows. But the doubling is much more clear on every single letter of the word Liberty. This FS101 double die quarter sold for a lot more money than the other ones we looked at because of the condition of the coin. This bicentennial quarter just sold at auction on May 7th of 2023 for $8,400. In lower grades for the silver 1976 quarters, the price will be more driven by the current price of silver. You can expect a low grade silver quarter to be worth between about $4 to $6. Even at mint state grades, you're not talking about a huge price increase until the mint state 69 and above. Look at the value of the MS69, $12,500. Lower grade nickel clad 1976 quarters aren't even shown on prices on the PCGS website. For business strike Philadelphia and Denver minted bicentennials, you'll need an MS63 to have a quarter worth about $4. If you come across a Mint State 68, you're looking at about $5,250. Here's what a Mint State 68 quarter looks like. Notice the crisp, clean strike and the lack of blemishes and bag marks. Here's a Mint State 68 1976 bicentennial quarter that sold at auction for $6,462. And here's what it looks like out of the slab. Take a look at the condition of the quarter. Notice the lack of wear on the coin. You can't tell luster from this picture, and there aren't many marks from other coins either. If you come across a quarter like this, someone probably dumped the collection, and you were the lucky recipient of someone's prized bicentennial quarter. This is a 1976S, minted at the San Francisco Mint. This quarter was graded as a Proof 70 Decam, a proof coin is a coin that was struck differently than the business strikes. Proof coins are struck under great pressure with dyes that nowadays are heavily polished and treated with chemicals to give a lot of contrast between the field and the relief of the coin. The relief is the raised part of the coin, and the field is the flat surface not used for the design or inscription. Notice the frosty look of the relief and the light and dark contrast to the field. Decams are sure to bring a little more value to a coin, and believe it or not, it's not uncommon to find proof coins in change or in rolls of coins from the bank. This proof quarter that we were just talking about sold for almost $1,900 at auction. Here's one that'll put a few extra dollars in your pocket. Good luck finding one of these in your change, though. It's probably not going to happen. This is a silver 1976S MS69, an almost perfect coin. This beauty sold at auction for $19,200. Here's a better look at it. If you come across a silver quarter, would you know how to tell if it's silver? That's something you really should know. Take a look at the video to the right to find out how to identify a silver quarter. Thanks for watching.